Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's get started on this algebra problem, the hardest algebra problem I've ever seen. I posted this on Facebook. We're going to go through the solution. Uh, this problem came from a derivative of the surface area of a cone. So we're trying to minimize this, this surface area. We're trying to find the radius where the surface area is minimized. So we have an algebraic equation here. We're setting equal to zero. And uh, we're going to give this thing a shot. So here we go. So this is the problem that we have. Uh, when I first saw this, I thought, wow, this is ugly. And in fact, it is pretty ugly and it's not easy, but uh, just take it step by step. And it turns out to be not, the, not terrible. So first thing we want to do is we know we have to combine these two terms eventually. But we're going to take that step by step. First thing we're going to do is, to make this thing simpler, we're going to distribute this across this term. So first, we are going to have pi, if we go from here to here, we're going to have pi r squared minus 1 half of 3600, 1800. Now we have pi r and we have pi squared r to the fifth. So we're going to lose a pi, one pi is going to cancel, and one r is going to cancel. Okay, I think we have this. We're going to keep this term the same, we haven't touched it. Plus 900. Okay, so you see here we have a negative exponent. When we take derivatives, usually we make exponents negative, so it eases the differentiation process. So this actually means that this term is a square root and it's in the denominator. A negative exponent means whatever's in here is in the denominator. So we can rewrite this if it makes it a little bit easier to see, which I think I did when I first solved this. Over. Like that. Okay, so now we have this term and this term. We still haven't touched this term. Now, we have a fraction, we want to combine these two. We're going to need a common denominator. This is going to be our common denominator. Notice that this is exactly what's in here. This makes it very convenient because this is a raised to the one half means this is a radical. This is, I'm going to just go like this. This is essentially a radical. So to get a common denominator over here, it means I'm going to have to multiply the top and bottom of this by this. So I'm going to end up multiplying these two radicals together, which are exactly the same, which means the radical is going to drop out. So we're going to get pi quantity r squared, 900. And then I'm going to keep the radical here. Still plus, still equals zero. Okay, so now you know from Algebra 2, if you have a common denominator, now you can add the numerators and keep the denominator the same. So now we can just rewrite this as, as one expression going across the top. Before I do that, I'm going to distribute this too. So we're going to end up with four terms in the numerator. So let's go ahead and do that. Pi r squared plus. Now we have a pi here, which means that basically we're just going to lose a pi down here. 900 pi r to the fourth plus pi r squared minus 1800 pi r to the fourth. Now I could write this as being, when you add fractions you want to keep the same denominator so I could write this all over this denominator but since the equation equals zero I know eventually I'm going to multiply both sides by this denominator to get rid of it. And if I multiply it over here, it's just going to become zero. So in essence, I just lose the denominator mathematically there. So I'm just going to leave it out. So now we have to deal with this top part here. So now we want to combine like terms again. So where are our like terms? These two are like, and these two have the same denominator, which is good. Uh, but they're also like terms. They're both 1 over r to the fourth. That makes them like terms. So we can deal with this 2 pi r squared. Now we just have to add these. Oops, it's going to be minus 
So we have 1800 minus 900, which is going to be minus 900 pi r to the fourth equals zero. So now when we get this, we know we're getting close. We simple. We started at this mess, and now we're down to just two terms, and it equals zero. So now what do I do? It might be, uh, you might think, oh, I can bring this over here and try to solve it. But whenever you have a, a equation of this form where you have exponents to a high power, you just want to keep everything equal to zero at this point. We want to combine like, we want to, we want to get common denominator again. So I need to have the common denominator is going to be pi r to the fourth. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by pi r to the fourth. So that means this is going to become squared, and this is going to go to six. And now I'm going to combine. Now I'm going to add these two fractions together, which means I'm just adding the uh, numerators. And again, I'm going to multiply this to get. After I combine, I'm going to multiply this equation both sides by pi r to the fourth which is going to in effect get rid of the denominator and it's going to cancel over here so I'm just going to be left with this now now I want to solve for r to the sixth so now I can bring this 900 over because I don't have two terms with an r to the r to the sixth and an r to a fourth I didn't want to do that last time but now now that I have them apart I can 2 pi square r to the sixth so now we're almost home. So close. Divide both sides by 2 pi. We're going to isolate r to the 6. And we can make a simplification here. This is 450 over pi squared. And then I can just give a sixth root here equals r. And there you have it. So that was it. Not so bad, huh? Uh, I hope you enjoyed that problem. I'm going to post some more because I actually didn't realize that everyone would enjoy doing it so much. I got a lot of feedback on Facebook, but I just saw that problem with a student and I was like, uh, turned into a head scratcher. So I passed it along. I have a lot of other problems that I've looked at that caught me off guard a little bit. And those are the ones I want to post because they're the interesting thinking problems. So Hope you'd enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.